All right, so let's go ahead and open up PowerShell. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the window key and type out PowerShell. Um, I pin PowerShell to the taskbar all the time, and I also update how it is displayed. So you know, if you want to change just the general look of it, go into the properties there, and you can you can get a bigger size if you need. Okay, so inside of PowerShell, I'm gonna go ahead and create a brand new virtual environment. So virtual environments keep all of my Python code in one place. So I'm gonna do it using three different kinds of virtual environments. The first one I'll use is VENV, the second is virtual ENV, and then finally the recommended one is PIP ENV. I'm gonna go ahead and change into my desktop here. And I'm doing it in the desktop just as test runs. This is not where I'll actually create my Django project. So you can put it wherever you want in that case. So I'll go ahead and do a MKDIR, make directory, and I'm gonna just call this proj or POJ, and then I'll CD into POJ. Now you're probably like, what is CD? What is MKDIR? Uh, CD just means change directory, as in change folder. Uh, because as we're navigating through our system with just commands, we have to type the appropriate commands for that. CD and make dir or mkdir, those are very, very common commands that you'll use a lot. And to get back, you just do cd dot dot, and that will take you back a directory. So then let's get back into cd proj. Okay, so to install a virtual environment or to use a virtual environment, we have to declare Python first. Right, so Python is the default when we want to use a package that's installed, but we don't know for sure which version of Python it's on or something like that. So if I did Python m pip install venv and hit enter, I get nothing found, right? And that's because venv is built into Python. So if I did Python dash m venv, and then I said whatever virtual environment name I wanted to give it, in this case, I'll do my env1 and hit enter. This is cr gonna create a brand new virtual environment for me using this version of Python, right? So this version of Python, meaning if I hit Python, it's gonna be whatever version that is. It's gonna be using that Python interpreter. So with that, I can list everything out and I see that my env1 is a new folder in here. And you know you can also check this by doing ii period, and that will open up that in the finder or the file folder, right? That shows you the file folder in the file explorer. And there are so many of these types of commands that you know just bear with me, type them out. You'll start to learn them over time, and if you forget them, just ask a question or you know just rewatch one of these videos real quick to get it back. Uh, but here it is. This is my virtual environment here, and it has a number of items already inside of that. Um, so if I CD into that, my env1, I can actually activate this with dot slash scripts slash activate. That's the standard command for venv. And this now has its own version of Python. So notice it's Python 3.8.2. Import sys and then print sys.executable, and let's see what it is. This is a different version of Python. It's in a different location than what we did before outside of this virtual environment. We can just verify that by opening up another Python shell, import sys, print sys.executable. Okay, so notice that those two are different. Right, so it's absolutely using a different version of Python for the virtual environment. Uh, however, this virtual environment was created from this version of Python or our systems version of Python. It's just now isolated in this virtual environment. I'm gonna say that so many times until, well, until it's old, I think it's already old. But anyway, so now that we've got that, the, the key thing here is not the version of Python so much as it is the version of software that's inside of this virtual environment. But I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm just gonna close this out. I'm not gonna talk about any other software yet, but instead what I'm gonna do is the next kind of virtual environment, which is virtual ENV. I'm gonna open up a brand new PowerShell here, and then I'll go ahead and CD into my desktop, CD into proj, 
and then I'm gonna make a new virtual environment here. And now I'm gonna do python-m pip install virtual env. And I hit enter. This is equivalent to just saying pip install virtual env, but again, it's using that version of Python. Now what pip is doing is it's using something called PyPy. It's basically looking for this application. You know, on your smartphone, you have an app store, you look for, you know, let's say for instance, you're looking for, what's a good app? I don't know, Visco. You look for Visco and you wanted to download that on, onto your phone. That's, that's what's happening here. This is searching the app store, the Python library app store, although it's all open source, it's all free. Uh, and then it installs whatever you're asking for it to install. And sometimes it takes a minute and sometimes you need to press enter a couple times. And then what you'll end up seeing is something like it successfully installed. Every once in a while, it'll tell you, hey, you need to upgrade pip. So then it gives you a command to do so. And if you select that command, hit right click and then right click again uh, at the uh, actual input area, you hit enter. This will actually download it and install uh, a new version of pip for you as well. So that's kind of cool. There we go. Um, and I'm gonna just let that finish real quick. Okay, so now that it's done, I'm gonna go ahead and now use virtual env. What I'm gonna do is actually type out virtual env and see if anything happens. What do you know? There's actually now a command on my PowerShell command line to use virtual env. Just typing out virtual env and python-m virtual env is the same in this case, right? I only have one version of Python that I'm working with right now, but those are the exact same commands. This is just a shortcut to actually calling this command. So oftentimes with projects, you'll just see virtual env. You don't see the python-m virtual env. And that's the same is true with pip install. You'll usually just see pip install. That's because pip is often installed on your system as well. In my case it is, but sometimes it's not, or you wanna use a different version of Python to do this. So I keep on saying all these different versions of Python. Windows users have it a little bit harder because of how the, the versions of Python actually work. So I'm gonna use one other version of Python just to show you this, and we'll do the C. You don't have to do this because you probably don't already have it. I'm gonna use Python 36 and then python.exe-m and I'll do pip install upgrade pip. And what that does is it attempts to install an upgraded version of pip in Python 36, right? So it didn't actually do it, it didn't work in this case, um, but that is a different version of Python. Um, so I'm, again, I'm not, I'm not trying to focus too much on all these different versions, but it, it, it does become a problem at some point and, and you're just gonna have to trust me on that even if it's extra confusing now. So if we type out clear, that actually clears our screen. I actually want to create a virtual environment with virtual env. So that means that I'll just go ahead and say virtual env and then whatever the name I wanna give it, in my case, I'll do my env2 and I'll press enter. Okay, so in this case, we could have specified the actual Python version that we want. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do II period to just make sure that virtual env2 was created or my virtual env2, uh, and it was. So let's go ahead and cd into that. So my env2, and then we do dot slash scripts slash activate, and there we go. So we actually have our Python, and I could just do dash v to see what Python version it is, and of course, there it is. Um, and, if, and I could also do the executable things and all that, I don't need to. Um, now, to actually deactivate this, so this was activate. To deactivate it, you just type deactivate, that's it. And to reactivate it, it would be dot slash scripts slash activate, there you go. Okay, so let's close this out. And the final one is pip env. Now, the reason I like using pip env is because of how it actually manages the virtual environment for you. The other two put it in a place, one place, but pip env manages it for you, which also means that if you sent this code to somebody who was on a Mac, they would be much more likely to just start executing it because of pip env. It's not perfect, none of these are perfect, but 
uh, I think it's it's one of the best options for beginners. So let's go ahead and get that one going. To use pip EMV, of course, I have to install it. So I'm going to do python-m pip install uh, pip EMV and let that run and install. So now with it installed, I'm going to go ahead and navigate into the desktop again and then into proj. And then we're going to make our final one, which is going to be my EMV3. I'll just scroll this up a little bit and say python-m pip EMV or Python module pip EMV. And then we will go ahead and just say install and hit enter. Pip EMV install actually will create that virtual environment for me. Um, and we can now run, as it says, to activate it, run pip EMV shell, or we can run things inside of there with pip EMV run, which I'll show you when we get there. So pip EMV shell, this actually activates the virtual environment. And if I do Python V again, it's that Python module. And in this case, I'm gonna import Python and then Python sys, and then print sys.executable. And what do you know, it's a, a brand new location. It's a completely different location that we haven't seen before. But more importantly, if I exit out of this and do II period again, what I see is pip file coming in here. Like there's not a new directory here at all. I named it something new, right? Or actually I left it empty, I didn't give it a name, which is my mistake, but um, there's no directory where these other ones had other items in there right? They have actual things in there where this virtual environment is all located inside of this directory instead. So this is where all of my virtual environments are. So I can show you that on my system. I have quite a few of them. So if I go to C, let's just go where it's telling me, C users J, and then down to virtual EMVs. Notice that I have a number of virtual environments in here. Um, that aren't related to the one I'm currently working on. The one I'm currently working on is this Praj one, and there's that same data, those same scripts, the same lib stuff. It's still a virtual environment. It's just stored somewhere else, and pip EMV makes all of that a lot easier for me, and it also creates this thing called a pip file, which I can open with a text editor. So if I go back into my project, let's just open that pip file up. And I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. Don't worry if you don't have this installed, I'm just showing you what this is. Um, so pip file, this is what it's showing you, me, right? It shows me the Python version I'm using and all of the packages that are related to this virtual environment, which is something that we'll definitely revisit once we get into the Django stuff. But this is um, the key part here is it creates this for us. It helps manage our packages where using those other two, virtual EMV and VEMV, they don't actually create those management options by default. They also don't show you what the runtime is of the Python version, right? And of course, mine is 3.8. Um, so that's the in-depth look at creating, installing, and activating virtual environments. Of course, if you watched the one prior to this, you would have saw the rapid fire one that we just did with pip EMV. Um, so pick which one you wanna choose with. Uh, I definitely used to favor virtual environment uh, or virtual ENV for my virtual environments, but I've since become a huge fan of PIP EMV because it's made my projects and sharing my projects much, much, much easier um, if I'm just sticking with Python only tools. Okay, cool.